Welcome to your daily dose of inspirational and life-changing Bible studies designed to equip you to conquer your world. We encourage you to share this devotion with your family and friends, even start a watch party. We know that you will be blessed and edified. Today's daily devotion starts now. Hi, hi. Hello, hello, everyone. God bless you all. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. I was, um, I've been teaching about that religious knowledge to my students. And the thing that is so, 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 so really, you know, amazing to me is the fact, and I, I say this often, right? that uh, what takes place in the spirit realm is even more powerful i like to say more potent than what takes place in the natural what is taking place behind the scenes where we can't see where we can't hear where we can't feel you know it's only when the lord gives us that opportunity really to to lock into him that we we are made away that's why the word of the Lord says that the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. With those who know him, love him, are walking in his ways. This thing about Christianity, I said to a woman, you know, sometimes we, all, we, we come from different backgrounds. We have different beliefs. That, that can be a spiritual thing, a cultural thing, right? We come from different backgrounds. We have different beliefs. But it's all about what God, what God says, not what God believes, but who God is, what God desires, what his word stands for. And I'm talking about the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. How what takes place in the, in the, in the unseen world, really, it, it dictates often what is taking place in the natural. The secrets of the Lord, I'm reiterating this, are with them that fear him. So when we are in tune with God, God makes us aware. God makes us aware of things that we can never be aware of. Sister Daniel, bless you, say a prayer for me, that we cannot know unless by the Spirit. One of our ladies from the women's prayer group, she would say, I don't know you, but I know you by the Spirit. When we are brothers and sisters in Christ, have you noticed how easy it is for two people who have just met, never knew each other, how easy it is for us as believers to connect, to begin to, to talk to each other, to hug and to kiss on the first day we meet, right? We carry the same spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. The Holy Spirit dwells in me. There is an ease at which we come together. I don't know you. I don't know you personally, but I can love you. I can be so concerned about you because we carry the same spirit. And then there are persons that, it seems as though our spirit repels. They would like to get close to us, but they can't because the Lord, he shields us, he covers us, he hides us. We never need to be afraid. How often you've heard me say that. God is with us, God is for us, and God makes us aware, hallelujah, of the things that we need to know. Pastor, he would say often, he doesn't get into the nitty gritty of, of, of a lot of things. There, there's so much on his plate that he has to deal with. So he takes the advice that Moses, his, his father-in-law, gave to him. The father-in-law said to him, you handle the big matters and the things that are, you know, less important, not less important, but less pressing. There are others who carry that, 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 that load, that burden. So he doesn't get into the, the, to the, the, the fine details of anything, but he says this to us all the time. It's like a warning. He says, if there's something I need to know, I will know it by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will quicken him. The Holy Spirit will make him aware. And there are things that are going on in your own home. There are things that are going on in your own life. And I say often that the Holy Spirit, he will make you aware of these things. One person said to me, how is it that this person is a part of your group and you didn't know, you didn't pick up the spirit that this person was carrying? I said to that individual, I said, you know, the Holy Spirit, he is not in the habit of exposing us. God is not going to tell my secret to somebody else unless I'm walking in a way that displeases him 
unless I have become, you know, I've gotten to a place where I'm rebellious and I, I'm not heeding, then we get into trouble. You know, the word of the Lord, I sometimes, oh gosh, I'm not going to go there. That would take too long. But it, that's just what happens. We get exposed when we, we, we fail to heed the warnings that the Holy Spirit would, would, uh, would give to us. But God, he hides our sins. But if there is something that is put on to you, Sister Corrine, the Holy Spirit will make you aware. And you know what I, I have noticed in my own life throughout my life? Huh? There are some things you ever felt as though something is up. Something's happening, but you're not fully aware of it, whether that thing is good or bad. You're not fully aware of it, my sister Heather. I love you too. Right? You're not fully aware of it. And at times like those, I say to persons, you know, we have a God. I, I'm going somewhere. Don't worry. We have a God. Sister Monroe, you know you. I don't need to say that to you. We have a God. Hallelujah. And he's the revealer of things. I say it this way that light dawns for the righteous. God is going to make you aware of the things that you need to be aware of. As long as you're connected to him. You're walking in his way. Sister June, you're purposeful, hallelujah, about doing the will of God. You're purposeful about pleasing your God. It's all about a relationship. There is something that's taking place <laughs> with me, right? Ask me what it is. I told my sisters, I said, I feel as though it's just time to get ready, get ready, get ready. Because something, something God has made all these awesome promises. He says that the day spring on high has visited us. He promised to come with answers to prayer. He promises to come, hallelujah, and fulfill the promises that were made such a long time ago. He promised to come and deal with entrenched evils. I hope you're hearing what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Pastor Luke comes and he talks about this river that flows from the altar and it flows into the streets hallelujah and the leaves are green and it's flourishing and the leaves are for for the healing and the fruit is the feed we, we are repeating that as a, as a mantra in church these days amen so the spirit of the lord he is speaking are we hearing what he is saying i told you all about this date that i put up and the holy spirit said to me sister alexis and this is for every one of us who hear the word and who are purposeful to do what the Holy Spirit says. That by that time next year, hallelujah, the Lord promises to do something. He, he promises to revolutionize our lives. That we could look back from that date, then when we get there, and, and see the notable difference that the Lord has made. However, I want to say to us tonight, that is not me sitting and waiting on this thing to happen. That is me being so intentional about it happening that I seek the face of God. We get tired. We get excited in the beginning. Eh? We hear the word and yes, that word is for me and we write down the date and we, we, are, we are happy. And then time goes by. Sister Lima, do not become weary. There is going to be a harvest that the people of God are going to receive. God is going to come in. Hallelujah. Sister Sima, God is going to come in and he's going to move so swiftly and so radically to change the circumstances of our lives. And you know, sometimes you, you sit in church and you hear a few persons come up and they give you their testimony and we say to ourselves, why couldn't that be me? When is it going to be my turn? I'm here to announce to you that your turn has come in the name of Jesus. I remember the date. I was waiting to see who did, Sister Sabita. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember the date. So I'm saying that God promises in this season to, to release a grace, a grace that is going to cause so many of his people to receive the things that we have been long asking God for. 
God is going to bring a change to your family life and your circumstances. There are some broken areas, very, very broken areas of your life. And it seems as though this thing is not going to change. Has anybody ever asked God, when is it going to be my turn? When do I get my opportunity to shine? Hallelujah. When is this circumstance going to change? Has anybody ever asked God that question? Something upon your heart. I want to tell you what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. God says that, uh, you know, when we, we sit and we hear persons testify, that God is going to make it, oh, you know, it's going to be a season of rejoicing. The breakthroughs are going to come and it's going to happen in such a way. Holy Spirit, help me. You know, when, when Pastor Luke spoke, the, the Lord has a way of speaking. And he's talking about, and that's a scripture I'm very familiar with, right? This river that's flowing from the, from, the, um, from the altar of God. And the Lord, I'm listening, I'm sitting in church and I'm listening to pastor and I'm literally seeing a flow. So deep, so deep, so deep. And what the Lord is saying to me is that his people are going to receive like never before. Praise the Lord. Help me, Jesus. With that river that is flowing and it's ankle deep, it's knee deep, it's waist deep. There are going to be so many testimonies that are going to come. And I want to tell you that the testimonies are happening even right now. Right now, right now. Hallelujah. The things that God has, has already spoken, it's being manifested even while we speak. Today I went out and I, I did something that I've never, ever, ever done before. I wish I could tell you. I've never done it before. It's something so, so simple for others, but it has never happened to me before, ever, 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 in my 35 plus many years of living. And I got home here almost six o'clock. So I went to work and then I went out. And I came back home and my heart is just stirred. And when God does these things, he moves in my heart because, hallelujah. I knew I was coming online. And I, I, I'm just in my room and I'm getting prepared and I'm just thanking God, thanking God for what he did. And I'm telling you, it, it's, not, it's not such a big deal, you know. <laughs> but I have never had the opportunity to do that thing before. And in my heart... I hear the Lord say, this is just the beginning. This is just like, oh my goodness, like the tip of the iceberg. This is just the beginning. When Pastor Luke says, every month that we're going to be producing, I want you to take that word to heart. I want you in this season, and now hear me by the Spirit. Don't just hear my words. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Listen to your ministers. Listen to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to Pastor Luke. Listen to your ministers all. They're not bringing a message that they, they pulled out of the Bible. We're bringing to you the word of God. And I take the word of God to heart. The thing happened to me today, and I'm marveling at, at how this thing was done. And it has never been. And this is something I've prayed about for so long. So, 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 so long. Lord, I don't want it to be this way anymore. And with, I didn't even expect it. I didn't get up this morning planning to go and do it. It was not even on my heart. I just happened to be in this place. And then the Holy Spirit moved. So I'm asking myself, do I do this thing or not? And I'm asking God, where is the peace? Where is the peace? Let me make sure I, I have the peace before I do this thing. I went, I, it, it got done so effortlessly. And the Lord spoke to me about what he's doing in the church. I said this before, that we are going to wake up. Hear me well. You're going to wake up one morning not knowing that that, that day would, be the, the, would bring forth that life-changing moment. 
It's going to happen effortlessly. It's going to happen so unexpectedly. You just wake up, Sister Alexis, a normal day. And just like that, huh, your life is changed in the name of Jesus. I want you to hear me by the Spirit. That river that flows, there's a flow, there's a, there's, oh Lord, there's a move of God that is taking place. And it cannot be stopped. <laughs> it cannot be stopped. You know God is sovereign and when he decrees a thing, it gets done. God is going to do what he has promised in the name of Jesus. And I'm saying to us, right? We all have a part to play. The time is going and I don't want you to be discouraged. You know when the word of the Lord said to me, and I'm going to repeat it as the Holy Spirit leads me, in the book of Acts, not Acts, sorry, in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 1, this scripture that the Lord gave me earlier, he says, and you, my child, hallelujah, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. This is Luke chapter 1 and verse 76. You will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. This is the assignment that God has given to me in this season. To make you aware, hallelujah, that your God is coming. In the name of Jesus. He's going to change your life so drastically. He's going to change it so radically. He is coming in the name of Jesus to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercies of God with which the day spring from on high has visited us. God is visiting us. I want you to know he is visiting us to do what he said he would do. God is going to use your most broken situations and circumstances to make a name for himself. Has anybody, and don't put it in the feed, this is between you and God. There are some persons who have really, you know, you feel as though you've made a mess of things. There is something upon your heart and, and, and it's like, you know, some persons when, when things happen, Sin happens, falling out, falling away, whatever takes place, right? It's very quiet, it's very personal. You, your close family members, one other person may know. But there are some things that when it's done and it's so public, you feel as though you can't recover from that. Everybody's looking at me at, in a certain way, you know? And um, persons know, they know the story. And uh, I like to say what they don't know, they, they add to it, right? And you feel as though there, there is no um, no redemption for you. There is no coming back. And even if you were to, to, to attain some measure of whatever, it could never be what you had hoped. The Lord is just talking to me. And that's not the case at all. The Lord always promises Sister Marilyn. He says, I will do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or even think. You know why some people won't even think? about it because you judge yourself right you judge yourself and you deem yourself to be unworthy because i have done this and because that has happened and and that that's driven by the enemy as well so we look at our our circumstances and we tell ourselves no you know it couldn't it couldn't get that good and i hear the spirit of the lord saying that uh, regardless you know, when God chooses a man or God chooses a woman, and I want you to know that all of us, we've been called. Few are chosen. Pastor Luke asks the question. He says, who are the chosen ones? The ones that answer the call. Have you answered the call of God upon your life? God, when he opens the gates, it's not for a few. And there are none that are righteous. No matter how much money and how pleasant your life may seem to everybody else. I've learned over the years that things are not always as they seem. 
Somebody said to me one time that strong men have strong weaknesses. Now, when something, you know, on the outside, it looks so awesome. We don't know what's taking place behind closed doors. That's not for us to know that's between God, but don't be fooled. So there are none that are righteous, not one. And when God calls us, he knew, you know, what gives me a confidence? I said, Lord, you call me before. <laughs> Hallelujah. You knew everything that would happen after the call and you still call me. And God's calling is without repentance. He's not going to, you know, commission us, call us, ordain us, appoint us. And then he says, I'm so sorry I did that. He knew everything that would take place before the call was made. So don't disqualify yourself and don't limit yourself. Don't do that. Sometimes we feel so judged. We feel as though, oh my gosh, because it's all out there. The Lord says, I've taken that thing, I've put it behind my back, never to be remembered again. Some persons just, just need to dream again. You have a gift, you have a talent, you have an ability, and you tell yourself, you know, there's this, this girl I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with, right? So gifted, so anointed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Certainly not where she needs to be in her walk with God. And I'm saying to her, you are going to get back to that place. And she says, how? Tell me how. I said, the how to is up to God. Don't I say that always? Your job is just to believe. Your job, hallelujah, is just to believe. And it's not just to believe. Faith without works is dead. So we have the date. The 15th of the 8th. But remember, it comes with, a, with, a, with a, a challenge. The word says, if you give yourself to God, and I'm talking about, you know, hmm, this, 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 this place when we first believed, the fire, the passion, let me tell you, eh, that thing cannot be mechanically generated. That can only come from a union with God that is so, oh my God, that oneness with God. And I want to say to you, even though I'm talking about all this oneness and this closeness to God, huh? <laughs> do we always feel that one? Do we always feel that close? No, 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 no. Me included. But I know that you are with me. I know you will never leave me. I know you will never forsake me. It really doesn't matter how I feel. God is with me. Hallelujah. On my worst days, God is with me. On my best days, he is with me. And I continue to do what God has called me to do. It's like me and this exercise. Do I always feel to do it? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I'm, 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 I have to. A, a friend of mine, she said it this way, right? She says, my, my self-esteem is tied to my weight. When I, I get out of sorts, I just don't feel good. So it doesn't matter how I feel, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it still, by the grace of God. Again, it's not all about how we feel. I feel so connected. I'm so in love with God. Sometimes I get angry with God. Sometimes I'm disappointed. Sometimes, oh my gosh, Jesus, can you do it any faster? Oh my God. Don't we all have these moments? But if that, doesn't, that doesn't draw my heart away from him. That doesn't shift me from my purpose. I want to say to us quickly, the time goes by so quickly. This is what I want to say. That uh, we have been given a promise that cannot fail. In this season, we are not going to be left out. God is going to do everything that he said he's going to do. He is a faithful God. I want us not to become weary in well-doing. We cannot mechanically, um, you know, <laughs> have that fire burning, that passion for God and, and that zeal. That comes, hallelujah, through intimacy. So you get your Bible. You spend some alone time with God. Some of us, we need, it's, you know, you could be online every time and still be struggling. They had a saying one time, closer to the church, further from God. Has anybody ever heard that? 
because there are some persons there in church all the time and yet they are unchanged pastor luke <laughs> i always quote my pastors right he says sleeping in the garage doesn't make you a car going to church being online doesn't make you a christian it doesn't talk about your your intimacy with god i want to challenge you to get back to that place i hear in my spirit that uh, there are some things that are pertinent to your advancement there are some answers that you are looking for there are things that we all want to do but there's this is a season of grace this is a season of the outpouring the river is flowing the anointing is flowing the grace is flowing and we have to get caught up in what god is doing and this is a, a time for us to get into that intimate place with God, that alone time with God. I want to tell you something. God pours his love into our hearts when we are dry and we feel so removed and far, far off. The Holy Spirit draws us to himself. How do you experience that joy? I want to tell you, you're hearing it now. The things I'm saying, I just know this is what God places in my heart and my mind while I'm speaking. All I have is my Bible before me. I don't even have a scripture. The scripture I wanted to read is so not in context. That's what I wanted to talk about. I couldn't find it on the phone. I'm shutting my Bible because I haven't used it yet. And this is how I hear the Holy Spirit speaking. Again, this is a, a, a season of grace. This is a season I hear God saying, you're going to do things just like me today, the simple thing that I did today that was so awesome. Hallelujah. So unexpected. God is going to lead us into those times just like that, just like that. We have a part to play. And I want you to be purposeful. This is what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying. To isolate yourself with your God. There's a young man in church. I don't know if he's online. He listens to me sometimes. And he's facing a very, very difficult situation. And he calls me. He says, Pastor, can I come to church? I want to have a prayer. And fast, I can't do it at home. And he stayed by the altar, kneeling by the altar all day all day all day all day one of the security guys says i feel sorry for the man <laughs> I understand. what is he going through so you understand he needed an answer what he wanted to do he couldn't do it in his own home so he came by the altars to cry out to his god and i said to my the ladies prayer group i like to use the word oh in scripture when 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 the lord and I want you to find it. Eh? And I want you all to, to really use this as a prayer point in Daniel chapter 9. It's something that I go back to all the time. Daniel understood from reading the book, Hallelujah, of Jeremiah, that the time, the, the 70 years that they were sent into exile was coming to an end. So he set himself before the Lord in prayer and in fasting and he continually cried out to God, hallelujah. And he would say, oh Lord, oh God, over and over and over again. And he repented of their his sins, his sins, the sin of his people, the sin of the nation of Israel. Please read it. Hallelujah, over and over again. And in the end, he said, oh God, again. And I want you to underline how many times he says, oh God, it's like a heart cry. Oh God, I want the situation to change. Oh, God, I need a move. I say some of us, we need to learn how to cry to God, cry out to God. That's not lip service. That's a heart poured out to God. And he says, oh, God, in verse 18, 9 and 18, he says, oh, my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our, des our desolation and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercies. The nation had sinned so greatly against God. 
He sent them for, into exile for 70 long years. The prophets warned them again and again they wouldn't heed. But in spite of all of that, hallelujah, God was doing something. God was exercising his mercy and his grace towards them. And in verse 19, he says, oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. Oh, Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. The time for your breakthrough has come in the name of Jesus. The time has come. But when Daniel knew that the time had come, he wasn't sitting back and waiting for the day, wow, for this thing to manifest, you know. No. He isolated himself. He got into a place, a quiet place. And he went before his God in prayer, in supplication. Here's what the word of the Lord says. He says after, okay, let me read it. In verse 2. He says, in the first year of the reign, of his reign, the reign of who? Darius, right? I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So when he understood that the time had come to an end, verse 3 says, then I set my face towards the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord God, hallelujah, and made my confessions. And he went on to tell us all that he had said. When he understood that his season for breakthrough came, he didn't sit idly by waiting to see this thing manifested. He went before his God and he cried out to his God. He said, oh God, hear, oh God, see, oh God, act in the name of Jesus. And I'm saying to you, and let me prophesy to Sister Alexis Williams. This is a great lady. A woman that truly, truly, truly loves God. And she is so purposeful to go out and to tell others about Jesus. And she has an awesome gift, a gift that has every right to make her rich in the name of Jesus. The Lord empowered you with a gift. And you tried in the past, it didn't work. But I want to tell you that God is going to do great things through you. And what the Lord does is that he creates a hunger in us. Because the word of the Lord says, and hear me well, the word of the Lord says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they are going to be filled. Which means if you're not hungry, you're not thirsty for the things of God, there is no reason to fill you right? And the Lord created a hunger in this lady and she's going out and she's testifying and, she's, and she has an excitement about what she does for God. And the Lord is as though he calls us and he waits to see your response. You don't have to respond in that way. You don't have to respond at all. But when you do, you're going to see the hand of God. And I'm saying to you, you will see the hand of God in this season, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So God is speaking. God is going to create circumstances and situations for us. I want to tell you, your response in this season is key to your breakthrough. Get into that quiet place. The time has come for a move of God, and this move is going to set you free. In the name of Jesus, I so feel the Holy Spirit presence. This move, Sister Donna, is to set you free. That the hand of God would be established. Like he has, you know, there's a word that was on my heart, and whole week I'm playing this thing, so now I'm looking for the scripture. And all of that, it, it, it's just not coming out. I don't know what God wanted me to say. And now it's just flowing and it's been flowing. This thing is supernatural. Hear me. Hmm. Hear the word of God. How you respond in this season is key. I want you to be really, 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 really purposeful in this season. 
There's a, a word and it says, in other words, the time to get ready has gone. You better be ready. Because when whatever is going to happen, you know, the Bible says you, you'll have no time to go back to retrieve anything. And this is a season like that. You're either ready or you are not. The Bible talks about the man. He says a man in scripture, if he knew that the thief was coming, he wouldn't fall asleep, right? He would be up and he would be prepared. The virgins, there were how many that were foolish and how many that were wise. Some of them kept their, their, their lamps in order. They were purposeful, looking out for the master while others rested. And God knows, he said to, to the nation of Israel, he says, how often I've wanted to gather you like a hen gathers his chicks, but you wouldn't let me. That's the best scripture I can use there as it comes to my heart. So God is doing something in this season and you're not going to be left out because he wants you to be aware. I want you to know, Sister Rhonda, that I'm doing something awesome. And I want you to get up on mornings looking for it. I want you to go to bed. There's a scripture that I repeat so often. Let the morning bring me good news. Let the morning, you know, like when it, when it dawns, you wake up. Let that morning bring me good news. I go to sleep with that prayer. And I've been going to sleep with that prayer forever. Let the morning bring me good news. So you're, you're, you're up and you're purposeful. You're going to bed. But the thing is with you continually. Now is a time for us to, to fast. It's a time to pray. It's a time to seek the face of the Lord. I'm not going to miss this outpouring. I'm not going to miss this grace. I'm not going to miss this turnaround season of my life. I'm not going to be caught up in sin. Hear me well. Right before the breakthrough, the enemy likes to come and tempt you and test you. To get you to do things that you ought not to do in order to cause you to miss what God is doing. And then you feel so condemned you can't even go to God anymore. Don't miss your season. Don't be fooled by the wiles of the enemy in this season. Get yourself prepared. Keep your ears in tune. The Holy Spirit is not going to make you miss it. Hallelujah. You're connected to him. His intention is to bless us. His intention is to do us good. And he's working along with us to get that done. But if it is that we are we are about our own business, doing our own thing. Then we won't be sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit. God doesn't speak with this booming voice always. He could do that. But the Bible talks about a still soft voice. And if you're not in tune with him, we can miss it. I'm saying led by the Holy Spirit. That now is a season for us to seek the face of the Lord. Some of you, let me advise you in case you don't know. Pastor has put up the rails, hallelujah, in church. Some of you need to come and spend some time. That's my intention, to spend some time at that altar. It's a sacred place. I could stay home and pray. Yeah, you could do that, right? I could do that. But I'm saying to us that we need to come and we need to, to really see God's face as we have not done it before. Because our time is now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Don't get distracted. So we need to get rid of the distractions. Put down the phone. Lock yourself away and, and meet with your God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. My grandmother would say a word to the wise is sufficient. Don't get caught up in any foolishness. Keep yourself. Granny would say keep yourself. Be careful. To do what God has asked of you. Be careful to seek his face. Your blessing is not for you only. Your blessing, Lord, is for the glory of God and for the good of your fellow men. Let me tell you what I hear the Lord. I want to pray and we're going to pray now. In Job chapter 22, look how quickly I found it. In Job chapter 22, he says, you will make your prayers to him. 
22 and verse 27. You will make your prayer to him and he will hear you. And you will pay your vows. Some of you, you made some promises to God that you have not kept. Hear what the spirit is saying. He says, you will pay your vows. Then you will also declare a thing and it shall be established for you so that light will shine on your way. Some of us need to go back to the place of our last obedience, according to our saying, right? What did God ask of you that you have not fulfilled? You should be quick to get that thing done, whatever that is. And if you don't know how to do it, say, Lord, give me another chance. Show me again. Lead me again. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. I want to finish on time. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Lord God, for what you have said. It's not what I intended to say. It is the the word of the Lord for your people. I thank you, Lord God, for what you did for me today, Lord. It was such an answer to prayer. So effortless was your move. So unexpected. I pray today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, according to the word that you released through me tonight. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue what you've done. Hallelujah. Because this is just the beginning of your move. I pray that all those that are online and have heard this word, all those that will hear this word, in the name of Jesus, I pray for us, Lord. Hallelujah. That we would heed the word. I pray, Lord God, that we would do that inventory I've always talked about of ourselves. Lord, where am I in your plan and your purpose? Lord God, in this season, what must I do to be right with you? I want to be on your timeline. I want to be, Lord God, hallelujah, where I need to be in order to receive what you have in store for me. Lord God, we have waited, some of us, for a long time. You know the circumstances that we are going through. How unfavorable, Lord, it has been for so many and for so long. You have heard our prayers, Lord. You have seen our tears. You know the state of our heart. You know the state of our affairs. And Lord, you have promised. You have promised to move in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You've promised a move of your spirit. Lord, hallelujah. You've promised that the day spring on high has visited us. And that visitation will bring answers to prayer. That visitation will cause breakthroughs. Lord, hallelujah. You said, Lord, that it will deal with things that have been so entrenched for such a long time. But in this season, Lord God, you're going you're gonna to root up. I, I just see the Lord, you know, rooting up certain things. It's as though the root is so long, it's so deep, it's so embedded. It seemed to be so unmovable, but in the name of Jesus, Lord, whatever it be, Lord, in the life of your people that have remained for such a long time and refuses to move, whether it's a mindset, whatever that situation is, sometimes it's persons that deliberately forcefully stand in our path, opposing what God is doing in and through our lives. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's circumstances that we cannot seem to overcome, come, we cannot seem to, hallelujah, surmount. But in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, in this season, Lord, the doors have been opened in the name of Jesus. I want to say to us that we have a responsibility to speak in this season. The psalmist David, he spoke to the gates. He says, to the gates, he says, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. He spoke to these doors. He spoke to these gates in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he commanded them to be lifted up. Hallelujah. I want to find it for us. He says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you, everlast you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. 
So David is standing and he's speaking to those situations. He's speaking to those circumstances. And he's declaring to them that the king of glory shall come in. They have to be lifted up. They have to be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It was his job to speak. And when he spoke the thing, um, hey, the king of glory came in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty. The Lord God who is mighty in battle. And this God is going to fight in this season. This God, hallelujah, is fighting for us. This God is going to break through for us. Speak in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the privacy of your own home, come on. What are the things that need to be removed? What are the circumstances you need to speak to? I want you to begin to lift your voice in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Speak to that thing in the authority of the name of God and tell it to be gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Speak to that opposition. It must cease in Jesus' mighty name. Call it by name. Whatever that chain is, say to that thing, break in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise you tonight for a move of your spirit that will bring to an end, Lord God, the affliction that your people have faced for such a long time. Move by your spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and break the chains that have bound your people, that has held us, Lord God, pinned us down in the name of Jesus. I come against the works of darkness in our mortal bodies. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, your people in this season shall receive, Lord God, the bread of life like never before. I speak healing and wholeness to your body, this tendency to not feel well. In the name of Jesus, I come against that thing for you, sister. In the name of Jesus, you just don't feel well and the doctors don't know why. But in the name of Jesus, that affliction comes to an end. Everything that has been inspired by, controlled by, manipulated by the enemy in our lives, it breaks in the name of Jesus. Somebody help me pray. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we break every chain. We break every hold of the enemy upon our lives and upon the areas of our lives. Begin to call those areas by name. Hallelujah. My resources are not dependent on the government and the budget. In the name of Jesus, heaven promises to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So, Father, I thank you for our supply. I thank you for a move of God that will cause us to have extra. I don't want you to pray for enough. In the name of Jesus, there are homes to be built. Hallelujah. There are families that we need to take care of, people in our own household that need our assistance. So, Lord, we thank you for a supply that will exceed the demand in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for a move that will feed everyone with baskets left over in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit. You promised, Lord. You promised. You promised. And you sent me before your people, Lord, to prepare the way to let us know that this thing is sure. Come, Holy Spirit. And for everyone who's online tonight, who have heard this word and believe this word in the name of Jesus, who've been purposeful to pray, and they feel as though this word has connected with what they are going through, Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, let there be a performance of the things that you have promised in the name of Jesus. They spring from on high, hallelujah, the one to whom all power belongs, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, do everything that you said that you would do. Do it, Lord God, for your people. I want to prophesy a breakthrough is coming your way in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you that a breakthrough is coming your way in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that there are those who are going to come back next week with a testimony of what God has done. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for breaking the chain. Thank you, Lord. You set us the double doors are open. You said the hidden treasures have been released. In the name of Jesus, breakthrough comes this week for your people. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. And Father God, we thank you 
that it is, even as you have allowed me to say, I seal this word under your blood. And I thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that will come. If you believe it, I want you to say amen. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is true. And we believe it, Lord. We will experience it, Lord. You know, I, I don't do that on purpose. But every time I've noticed that the Lord had me pray for breakthrough, and I can go back and tell you every time I've experienced God do something, I want you to live in anticipation this week. God is going to do something in the name of Jesus. Father God, and I thank you. I thank you for what you've done, for all that you've said. And no word of God is without power. Thank you, Lord God, for your power demonstrated through what has been spoken tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. Again, I say amen, amen, amen. I want you to do me a favor and to like this. I'm seeing 61 likes. We had a meeting, and I want to tell you that this thing is not to get likes. This is to spread the word of God. This is so that others, hallelujah, are going to receive what God is doing through this ministry. I want you to press the like button and I want you to share it. I want you to send this word in the name of Jesus to persons everywhere that you know need to hear this thing. Hallelujah. Like it and share it so that others may see and hear because I know, I know, I know, I know that this is not from me. This is from the Holy Spirit, amen? So thank you as always for being on. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for sharing it. Hallelujah. Thank you for your faithfulness. Be sure to be on next week, not next week when I am on. Hallelujah. But tomorrow morning as well. I want to challenge us, get back into the house of God. Amen. Come on, come on. Get into the ministry. Don't sit on your gifts and do nothing with it in this season. Why would God give you more if you're not using what you have? Don't disqualify yourself from what God has in store for you. Amen. So God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you. God continue to grant you his peace. And make sure to stay in love. Stay in love with your God. In love with yourself. And in love with the people of God and the things of God. God bless you. God bless you all until we meet again. Bye, everyone. You took the form of it.